I just want to welcome everybody to today's show, The Entrepreneur Show. And my name is Heidi Richards Mooney, and I'm the, your host and the founder of The Entrepreneur Show, as well as Women in E-Commerce. And it is my distinct honor to interview our guest today. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about her. Her name is Marguerite Beatty. She is a photographer, author, and teacher. She loves to teach photography. In fact, she teaches online at Udemy, Photography Class Guru, the Art Institute, and now Skillshare. Some of the classes she teaches are baby photography, food photography, introduction to the DSLR camera, and the business of photography. She teaches online, as I mentioned before, at Udemy, Photography Class Guru, and the Art Institute, as well as Skillshare. So please help me welcome Marguerite. Hi, Marguerite. Hello. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that we get to redo this. We had a little technical challenges with the last show. So, uh, so at least we get to redo it, and I'm very excited. And, of course, I've got my backup plan in action. It'll be the first time I'm using this backup, so we'll see how it works. And probably what will happen is the whole thing will be fine. <laughs> It'll work out. Yeah, once you have a backup, you won't have a problem. Exactly. <laughs> it's always like that, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, and usually it only happens when I have two guests on back-to-back. -back. So I'm thinking that maybe I need to change that strategy a little oh. bit. So it seems like that's the, the last three times that it's happened. It's been the first guest didn't didn't uh, film or record, and then the second guest did. So keep that in mind if you're listening in and thinking about starting your own Udemy. Ud I'm sorry. Uh, lab <laughs> class. <laughs> We're going to talk about Udemy, though. And I just want to say welcome to Dina Eisenberg and uh, all the other people who are in the room. Thank you. And we'll we'll get to you. We've locked the extra seat just so you know what's going on uh, so that we can have our formal interview with Marguerite. And then I will open it up to questions if there's time at the end. So, Marguerite, tell us a little bit about what Udemy is and why and how you became interested in using this platform to teach your photography classes. Okay, so Udemy is a great platform for people to teach classes, and you don't have to have a master's degree. You just have to have a knowledge or a passion of something, of a great subject, and then you can create a class and you can share it. There are several reasons why you want to do this, but let me go back a bit, and I think about this as writing a book. Many people write a book to share knowledge and it shows uh, it's also a great way to do marketing because you can share your book. You can use it as a complimentary kind of information. And I started using the Udemy class as a textbook. So I did what everyone tells you not to do. I did a big, long, complex class that had too many details and lots of assignments. And it really doesn't have too many details because it was my textbook. But for the kind of class they want, it's just too many details. So what I did is whenever I taught a one-on-one -on -one class, which is what I was doing more last year, I would use that as complementary lessons and assignments. And it would be a great visual way for the student to understand and to remember what I just had gone through. Because when you're learning about photography, you're going through the camera and there are a lot of details. There really is a lot of information. And so this way um, they could review everything in the video and then they had their many assignments and they could share that with me and things like that. So my first class was for that. It, I really wasn't thinking about, I'm going to do this class and I'm going to sell tons of you know, spaces and things like that. I, I, it wasn't really what I was after. Of course, when as time went by and I started being part of the Udemy groups and list, uh, listening, hearing to, uh, reading what people were writing, I started thinking, you know, I should rethink this class thing and try to do them as shorter classes and really market them and sell them. So that's how that started. So what was your first class? What was it called? And um, and tell us, you said it was a really co more complex. When you say complex, was it in terms of the length or in the terms of the, the information? Um, well, the length is about, uh, well, the class, if you just look at it, it's about an hour and a half, maybe almost two hours. But the truth is for you to do each assignment, it would take you uh, a long time. Like one of them is an assignment for landscapes. So you've got to get in your car, go look for landscapes and photograph and come back and share them. So, uh, 
so I think that um, in in that term, you know, it's a much more complex class because it has details. It's also a really good class because you're going to learn photography really well. It's called create exceptional photographs and learn the manual mode. So you're going to learn how to use your camera in the manual mode and you get exercises for each one, which will enhance whatever it is that I taught in the videos. Um, I don't know any other way of teaching how to use a manual mode quickly because those cameras are really complex. I don't know if you've seen the manuals, they're like humongous and it can take you weeks and months to go through it. So this is a really easy way to learn how to use the camera in the manual mode. Oh, interesting, interesting. So what are some of the things that our audience needs to know before creating their first Udemy course? I think what you need to know is something that I totally ignored. And you need to know the technical aspect of how to create a, um, a class. And so the basic, the two things that you really need to pay attention to is how to create a good sound. And the second one is how to create a good visual. And the good sound is probably the most difficult because we don't realize how much these tape recorders pick up any little ambient sound. You might be near a refrigerator and we don't even hear that humming of the refrigerator anymore because I think we're so used to it. And it comes in the video as if it were like, ooh, you know, this wind in the background. <laughs> so there's all these things that I didn't realize. I've never worked with video or anything like that. And so for me, the sound was the biggest challenge because it wasn't going in my head that it, it why is this picking up so much? So uh, that's the number one. So you need to have a good microphone, but the truth is you also need to be uh, taping in a place that doesn't have the air conditioning and the humming of refrigerator or something like that. So I'll give you a tip because this is what I, I started testing the other day. I, I've cleaned up, you know, 2016, I decluttered my room. And so as I'm in the middle of decluttering, I took everything off the walls because I'm going to choose cleaner things to hang in there. And all of a sudden that room has a humongous echo. So I use, wow. for baby photography, I use two mattresses that are, are really uh, pet mattresses. And I use them as a, you know, for my photo set for baby photography. So now I have two mattresses, one on each side here, and it doesn't pick up. And so, you know, I'm talking on the microphone, it doesn't pick up any noise. So it's like having a little cubicle and, and the sound is perfect. But I didn't know that when I was starting. So, you know, it, it took a while. The other thing is, if you want to do talking head, that is still a challenge for me because no matter what room you go to, uh, you probably have some kind of noise because we're not, we don't have studios at home. So something's coming in. And you also want a nice background or simple or something, you know, I've got something like that in the background. And that's the biggest challenge. So you have to have a good microphone. See, I'm spending a lot on sound because I got rejected for sound many times. So that's like a big thing. And then the video, you just need a good sharp camera that will, you know, and good lighting. Well, I think you're right because I have, I, I work in a very small office. It's my home office and my, and it is, has really good sound protection. Um, so there, I don't have, uh, noise in the background. I don't, uh, because it's a smaller room, there's not a lot of echo. I don't know how you, how I sound uh -huh. to you. No, it's sounding very clear. Uh, it's I, very clear. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm on my Mac. I'm not even using a microphone. And so I think also the size of the yes. room makes a big difference because it holds all that ambient noise that um, you wouldn't hear, which is why you see in, in recording stools, studios, you always see you know, padding or something on the wall that kind of keeps that sound out and the echoes from the room yeah. from reverberating. So, so that's a really good point. And so one of the things I think people should know. So knowing what you know now about Udemy, what's the one thing you would have done differently in the very beginning? I think beginning? I would have done some sound uh, classes or more testing and things like that. And the other thing I, I would have done is probably learn a little bit about video because I, um, as a photographer, I thought, oh, big deal. I'll just, you know, start doing this. And the video camera is completely different. The 
the lighting is different, how you control the lighting. So I would have done those things. And I also would have paid more attention to what kind of a background I have for a talking head. It doesn't have to be anything fantastic, but if it looks nice and you know a little bit fun, it makes a big difference. So those are the things. Now, another thing I think I would have done is plan the class a little bit more so that it would be short and concise. Because what I ended up doing is doing extra tapes that I saw were just way too, too long. And so I started editing them out and not using them. Now I'm a little bit more careful with the type of outline that I use. And it's still too long. I still end up getting rid of things, but it's much better than it was in the beginning. I think it's all is hard because we want to, we don't realize that you don't really have to explain things 10 times. You, you have to do one really good explanation and make it very short and concise. So I'm spending more time in the preparation than. Uh, than I was before. So uh, how long does it take you to prepare for a course? I mean, this is going to be a three-part okay. question. Uh, how many, uh, how long is, say, each segment typically? And um, how long does it take you once you've prepared to actually create okay, the course? Okay, so each lecture, that's what they are, are between, mine are between three and five minutes long, not more than five, because uh, people's attention, and especially if I'm going through any technical babble, I mean, there's only so much you can really take in. So I try to stay actually within the three minute. For me to write that, it can, depending on how complicated it is, it can take, 30 minutes because I need to keep editing out, editing out. And, and my one, I, I keep wanting to go, oh, and then, you know, you can do this and I'll give an example. And then I have to stop and go, wait a minute. This is how to do this. It's not why to do this, right? So it takes me um, maybe 30 minutes to write it. It's almost like as if you're preparing, which now I'm getting more into uh, preparing a Twitter post. You, you know, I'll write it out and then it's amazing how much you can take off to make it, you know, much shorter and give people enough space to, to share it, to retweet it. It's the same idea. So, so, so being succinct yeah, is very super important. important. I think if you um, stick to that, then the classes really make sense and they're going to flow much better. Um, yeah, definitely. I have that same problem because when I'm recording our, for our, for instance, for our masterminds, I'll be doing my program, which I've always outlined. I typically outline and then do a few words and then expand on them. And then I remember something else I forgot and I try to <laughs> stick it in there. And then the, 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 cause ours are typically 10, eight to 10 minutes. That's what Christine and I figured out. You were going to do four videos for, for the, for the uh -huh. upcoming class, you know, eight to 10 minutes is ideal. <laughs> Mine have gone as long as 15 minutes. So, because I just get to that point and then, and I'm really good at writing uh, in sound bites, but talking in sound bites for me has been a challenge, which is one of the reasons I haven't really, haven't started my Udemy course yet because I know it's going to be a challenge. I need to really practice first. So having the mastermind helps you a know, lot. What I you know. do nowadays is I do a script and now I read from the script. It doesn't sound like it. Um, it doesn't sound like I'm reading it. I've, I've um, you know, I practice so that I have intonation. And, and I mean, maybe sometimes if you pay attention, you might think so, but you can't really tell. And, and I, I stick with the script and that's helped me tremendously for each class. Yeah. That's great advice. So, um, how easy or difficult is it to get approved to teach courses on Udemy? In other words, what's the process? You know, um, I wish I could give you a really good answer like that because they've been changing it a lot. So my first class was not easy at all because there were issues with the sound. Uh, the visuals, they were all fine. Actually, the only issues I had were with the talking heads. The other ones they had approved because they'll tell you exactly what's up. So what I would do is this, when you start your class, do one video test, or actually you can even do two, but do one video test of the kind of video you're gonna do most. So let's say it's a screencast test. So do that test and send it to Udemy. 
because that that's what this is for they'll listen to it and then they'll tell you what's wrong and they can give you tips i use this a lot when i uh especially in my second class because i saw i didn't want to get rejected over and over again i was over that so i just kept sending them tests until i had enough information in terms of the size the quality everything the minute they approved that then i started taping all my classes Excellent. And then that, that class, class got approved. approved. So the first two classes took longer. And then the third one, I thought, okay, here we have something here. Let me use it. And I got approved without, you know, immediately the first time it went. So does it cost anything to be an instructor no, it on Udemy? Uh, it's very easy. All you have to have a great idea, create your course, and then um, do participate in all the groups because I found them very helpful and, and go for it. So um, what, what kind of equipment do you use to create your courses? I have a very good Canon camera uh, that is a video camera, and I use that for my talking heads. And then for the sound, I have a separate, uh, separate tape recorder. So, And then what I do is I join the sound with the video. It takes a little bit of time, but when you practice and you get it going, you do it a few times, you're fine. In the beginning, it's a little bit all overwhelming. But that way I have very good sound and very good uh, videos and you know, it, the quality is much better. And actually you can tell like from the second class, I didn't have a very good video camera. And my, uh, my talking heads were a little bit out of focus because I didn't, pay attention to this, that a video camera has to have the focus that follows you. And I had a cheaper video camera. So if I move like this, and I do move around a lot, I didn't notice it, but even a little movement like that, I would be out of focus for about five, 10 seconds, which is a long time in video life. And so then I got a more expensive camera that follows me. And then like this, this is pretty good. This is actually, but this is on the computer. Um, it follows me and I could, do a very good uh, a very good tape so i did make an investment in in that in the two things in the tape recorder and the video i think you can do it on a budget i think these the, if you have a new computer the camera is good this is a new computer yours is also good right you're getting a good yeah yes well i have an imac which makes yeah. a difference yeah I mine think, is, too yeah my you know spending that kind of money on a computer i want to use it as exactly. much as i can so what about Editing, what do you use for editing your videos? Like you're talking about, you know, combine the video with the audio in two different two different uh, things that the you're using. I, the new iMovie, I forgot. Yeah, the new iMovie, movie, okay. For me, it iMovie allows you to do great. a really good job. When I was actually, my first class was done with a very old version and I wanted to die. But this new one is very quick. It's really <laughs> great. And so I use that and then I use uh, screencast uh, for, but not for really editing, just for the, you know, some of the slideshows or something like that. So, okay, so then, um, so a typical class of yours is how many segments? Like, and how long is a, a class all together when you put the segments together? It has, uh, I spend the, uh, quite a bit in the beginning because, and th I think this is important. This is something I think most people uh, might uh, benefit from. So you you want to have a really good introduction. So uh, my introduction is not all about me because remember people are signing up to learn something, not to learn about you. You They can go to your blog or something like that and get to, you can tell them where to find out more about yourself. So I spent quite a bit of time introducing the course, telling them what they need, asking them to share their photos with me because I want to connect with them. This isn't a live course. So I have to do the best I can for them to see, look, you know, I really want to chat with you. I want to get to know you. And so my beginning has, uh, you know, one of the, the first section is an introduction and it might have three or four small lectures about how to share and the different things they need for the course. And then I have at least four or five different sections about the course. And then each section might have three or four lectures. And I try to add an assignment for every single lecture so that you feel that not only you learned it, but you practice it. And the other thing is you, if you share, I will comment on it. I will give you tips. And, and I'm very, very, um, 
strict about that with myself. I always am going into the classes because I think that's one of the best ways for you to get to know more students. And also, I think, you, I, I'm not sure about this, I'm not gonna promise, but I know that the classes that have more action, I don't know, I'm thinking, uh, will get a little more attention from Udemy and, and the SEO and all that. So I make a big point of, of being very present in my classes. That's great. So each so each lecture is like three to five minutes yeah. long, and then your total class could be how and long? Th the new ones are about between, you, you know, in terms of not doing the assignment, it could be half an hour to 45 minutes. It's probably about 45 minutes. And how do you price your programs, your classes? You know, that's the hardest thing. I have the full price there. Um, one class is 187, the other class is 147, and then the food photography with the iPhone is 49 or 47 uh, dollars. So that's the full price. Now Udemy uh, does a lot of um, coupons and things like that for you to buy the classes cheaper. So I go along with them, and their coupons are usually 10 dollars. So I give those coupons as well. The price is there. I mean, I wish. Um, I, I didn't realize how much they worked with the coupons. I did learn, but yeah. I, oh, go um, ahead. But then I also began to understand is that they're selling to the masses. So it's much more interesting to sell right. many more at a cheaper rate and get tons of new students and tons of action in your class than to sell one or two classes at the full price. I think it, you have to think about these things in a different way. And it took me a while to go, you know, th this is going to work out really nicely. Well, hey, if you sell yeah. the thousand uh, at $10 or 10 at the full price, you're making a lot more money yeah. at a thousand. Yeah. Now, plus you're building a, a huge database, a following of people that you can now market to for other things. So let's talk about marketing. How do you market your Udemy course? And do those people then become part of say your database for future and other and other um, programs and, and products that if, you have. If Udemy is marketing for you, um, they're the ones that are bringing in the students, right? And so what happens is this, we are not allowed to market directly to the students. So you can announce different classes. You're allowed to do one or two announcements in a different kind of section, a different way, and you can add your coupons there. They're very strict about it, but I cannot get their emails. So the only way to do that is to create a Facebook group or something like that. Well, it would have to be something like that. And if they start uh, messaging you, asking you for tips and things like that, eventually maybe you can take them somewhere and discuss with it. Uh, with them somewhere else. Now, what I do, which so far has been, uh, I've been allowed to do this, and I see other people doing it too, is I write a blog that I post on my classes once a week or once every 10 days, and it's a how-to, and it has something to do with whatever it is that's going on in the class. And on that blog, I have how to connect to me, and then I have coupons for the other classes. And so that's how I do that. But how do the people on your Udemy course learn about those things? Do you, are you able to say blog. in your class, uh, go to my uh, blog? I, are you allowed to promote your blog and your website well, without selling it? Yeah, you can't promote it um, uh, like that. Like go to my blog, you know, like that, something like that. What I do is I create a post and I say read more on my blog. And then, yeah, oh, okay. and then on my blog okay. I have opt-in and things like that. So... So then in your courses, like at the end of your course, do you say, oh, and for more information, contact me here? Or do you, are you able to do that? Or can you give away something like, say, your last course, your last screenshot, for instance? Are you allowed to do any kind of promoting that way in your actual course? Um, what they've done now, and, and I'm not up to date about this, but what they've done is that uh, you're allowed to do something on your last lecture that can be kind of a mini promotion. Um, but okay. you've, got, you, you've got to be very careful about how you promote it. It can't be like, oh, buy this. You know, it's got to be one of those soft, soft promotions. So I wasn't saying for selling something, like maybe getting them to say, hey, by the way, if, if you like this course, go to my blog and I have other courses that you can learn about, get free coupons and come back to you to me to use or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Yes. Yeah, on the, the last process. lecture, you can do that. So the other thing that I found, <laughs> what I found okay. really interesting is this. Um, 
last year, a lot of people had really long classes and they would add more, instead of creating a new class, they would add more lectures to their old classes, right? And since they changed this way of, uh, how to communicate, you know, or how to promote yourself to the students by saying that the last lecture is the one that you can do a soft promotion. People's classes started getting smaller because the truth is most students don't go through the whole course. Ah. So, and you have to wait till the end yes. to do that. On your on your videos, can you put your URL like at the bottom of each video? Like I, I all of my videos are done through I, I create like a PowerPoint presentation and then I film it as I'm speaking. So and all of mine always say redheadmarketinginc.com or whatever I happen to be promoting. Well, they, or, put, they put oh, their okay. little logo there at the bottom. So oh, so okay. it might cover yours. Okay. I don't bother with it um, because yeah. Can you repurpose your videos and your lessons in other areas like Skillshare and and uh, photography class guru, et cetera? Are you a, are you allowed to use them? Yes, in other and the venues? really cool thing is this. Um, uh, the oh gosh, um, it's gone blank. It's not Zenner, but there's another. Okay, let me start with this. If you if you want to use it with Skillshare, you can uh, just share it directly or upload it, if I'm not mistaken. Now, Skillshare is very different because the classes are much shorter. So I'm doing a test there, and I have the baby photography class, and I only have three or four mini sections. It's not even 15 minutes long, the class, you know, uh, because Skillshare is much shorter. But there are other uh, – there's a place called Zendler, and I've – I went blank right now. There's another place that you can export your class directly from Udemy to them. The only thing you have to remember is all these other places do not promote as well as Udemy does. Udemy really does promote their classes. So, but but what would be the benefit then of doing that? Are you able to promote those classes separate and sell them for a different price? Or do you have to sell them for the same price that you're selling them for on Udemy? Okay, there, there's something, let's say Skillshare, you would probably sell cheaper because they're shorter versions. And okay. I would do a study of all the prices and things like that and see what's best. Um, Zendler, the other one that I forgot the name, uh, you you um, can do full price. The only problem is if someone finds out that you're selling somewhere else cheaper, you might create a, a bit of a problem. So I think you need to think right. about how you do it. So if let's say um, I did, I'm going to do a test with Zenner. So I've already uploaded my class. And what I might do with that one is add some more classes, some more lectures there so that I can charge more. If they're a little bit different, you can explain, look, this, you know, this has more or something like that. I would be careful with that because, um, yeah. And yeah. The, the other thing is a lot of these like Zenner, they only charge 10%. Udemy charges a little bit more. I don't know. I forgot how much Skillshare charges to, you know. Um, yeah. It's like, I think it's like 10 or 12 percent. It's, it's yeah. pretty inexpensive. Um, so that's how I would do it. I'd be aware, very aware of what you have where and for what price and make sure that you make them a little bit different so it doesn't seem that, you know. Got it. But but the the fact is, if you can repurpose them, say, for instance, they're not moving very well on Udemy or even with all of the couponing they're doing, if you can repurpose them in some way, even if it's adding classes or shortening them, then it would make sense to, you know, continue because I think people might get discouraged if they're not selling. And of course, they might not be selling because the classes are really not anything people want. So how do you know what it is that people want to okay, learn? Okay, the first thing that I... Um did is uh, the big, big thing is the title of your class. First of all, you need to think, what, you know, what is it that people want to learn? So my subject is photography. And I started doing a little, uh, my own kind of studies, nothing fancy nor very formal, but I started thinking, you know, what is it that people are asking me about whenever I post something or, you know, what's this topic that's coming over and over? And I saw that baby photography was a topic that was coming over and over and over and over. So I thought, okay, baby photography it is. And then you have to figure out, um, and, and I'm going to bring this up, which we didn't really talk, is you have to think about the title because whoever is looking for baby photography classes, how do they look for it? And then, and then you title 
your class accordingly. Do, you can do a test on YouTube and see how much attention you get with that with different titles, and and then maybe use that for your Udemy class. Th that's how I did. I started thinking, you know, you know, what is get your grant if you're doing business what is it that people are asking you about business is it how to blog how to promote how to whatever and then do a mini test and see what is it that comes up over and over and over and i think then you have your class well that's how i've created my frequently asked questions oh. pages on all my website by figuring out you know ask, answering the questions that people ask all the time and then when you have once you've gotten the answer down to a science and use it as a fact or, you know, FAQ. And then um, it's a great way to save you time, too, because you you're right. People will tend to ask yeah. the same questions over and over again and um, sometimes a little bit different way. But it's still a, basically the same question. So um, uh, what else would you like to share about you? I think that it, you have to uh, look at you to be in different ways. Of course, the ideal is to go in there and sell for tons of money. And there are people that have made a lot of money like that. Now, I think it's changed a lot. It's grown. There are many more classes, so it's more competitive. So I would look at it in two ways, because if you only look at it one way and it takes longer to sell, you're going to be discouraged. So I would look at it like it's a class to sell. It's a business and you've got to look at it as a business. You've got to sell. Right. And the other is it's a, this class is like your book. You're the author and what it is, it's showing people that you're an expert in that subject. So when you market it, you market it both ways. You can, you know, this is how you learn how to do X. And then the other is, you know, you market to sell. But I think you have to go in it thinking in two ways, you know, that it is your book, your class, or, you know, and, and it is a business. You've got to be very clear about how you're going to sell and how you're going to promote it, which I wasn't in the beginning. Uh, so I started the opposite, you know, I, I'm like, oh, now I'm trying to catch up. <laughs> so speaking of books and text, do you support any of your videos with any kind of written text? Like, say, here's a workbook to you can download to follow along or anything like that. Or have you, have you thought about that or other people? Doing Actually, anything it's like really that? important. What I do in the class is every lecture has a PDF file that they can download so they can read it and follow it like that. Okay. Is that yes, also to the uploaded class. to You've got to be me? careful where you upload it. Okay. It's got to be part of the lecture. And that's how, yeah. And that way, because uh, okay. you, you, there's some people that learn more when they read it, right? So it's important. Yeah. 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 Right. Exactly. So then you're hitting all the senses, the auditory, the visual, yeah. and the kinesthetic, which is great. And I think you're right, because uh, especially when you're thinking about online learning, people do learn in a variety of modes. Um, so. You talked about marketing briefly. Did you have anything else, any last tips or other tips you want to talk about about marketing, such as I know you mentioned that Udemy does couponing. Do you use that in any way? And if so, how do you use coupons to market your uh, Udemy courses? I have lots of coupons for $10 that I sell throughout the year or maybe once a month or something like that. And then twice a year, I will sell the classes for $2 what, just before a special holiday. So there's a Christmas holiday. And then I think of another one um, somewhere in between. And then I'll, I'll do a big $2 thing because it's going to bring new customers and new students in, which is what I need uh, for that for those classes to stay active. And so that's how I do it. And then I've, I've done a few courses on Udemy that teach you how to market and how to put your coupons in different places. But the big thing is I've been using my blog and then I post on, uh, on Twitter, on my Facebook page, which I have not done very well with on the Facebook page. And lately what I've been starting to use, I started to use more and more as the YouTube, YouTube, YouTube channel. So what do you do? Take one of the videos from your I'll class and post I'll it to YouTube? I'll give a little YouTube? snippet. I've got a few of those that are, uh, you know, just a few seconds and then I'll say something and then, you know, take someone there or I'll just do a new, um, a new video that will talk about one of the, for example, for food photography, maybe I'll take a photo of my lunch or something like that. And I'll say, you know, this is how I did this. I'll give a, a few tips. Oh, do you want to learn more food photography? And then you have the a link to a coupon. 
So like a, almost like a yeah, movie yeah. trailer, but it's a course trailer. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so do you follow any particular people on, on Udemy? And if so, who are some of your favorite There's an uh, instructor Udemy instructors? that I learned a lot of marketing and sales tips. It's called Alan Hill, A-L-U-N, Alan Hill. Um, there's Alan another Hill. British guy called John, I think it's Connolly, his last name. And and Dennis oh, Smith. Actually, Dennis Smith is a, uh, I did a course on, you know, how to find the coupons and, and the places and things like that. And I thought his course was really quite important. Dennis and John both have uh, uh, Facebook groups, which are quite helpful. And uh, so I follow them off and on. I'm not on all the time because then I don't do anything else, but I, I go on and off and I follow them. <laughs> So um, what's your latest course on Udemy? What do you, what do you, what do you have up I there have now? I have two courses I'm working, working on? on. One is very quiet right now because I've got to redo a bunch of things. And, and it's how to do a Udemy class. So it discusses the different types of lights, um, filming with computers, cameras, and things like that. And that's um, almost finished. And then the one that I'm really working on right now is using your smartphone as your camera for different Types of yeah, because it, Ooh, like really that. it's what we do nowadays. Everybody's camera to go is the smartphone. So during that class, you're going to be learning techniques that people use with the real cameras, with the DSLR cameras, so that you can get better photographs. And then I discuss different things like lighting, how to create a better lighting if you want to attract someone to your product or if you want to distance them how to use for ex i'll give you an example so if you want somebody to feel more connected to your subject what you want to do is warm the light a little bit more so you want to use more yellows oranges and reds and if you use blues and greens it's going to distance the person so there are things like that that you can nuances that you can add to your photography that will make them work for you in an interesting way. Excellent. Uh, before we leave, I, maybe you could post the, the equipment that you talked about earlier that you use over in the discussion area, because I think that would be valuable for people who are watching the replay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, where you get your creative ideas. And, and in other words, what is the process that you use to come up with ideas for your courses and of course your My, business? Um, cre <laughs> the creative ideas I get is, it's gonna be so vague, but it's everywhere. So if I'm going for a walk, I'm one of those uh, people that, you know, you, I start going for a walk and I'll start looking at something and then it will connect somewhere else and I'll get an idea. So that can work visually or if I'm writing something. Uh, I'll, I, I can be having a meal with somebody and I'm outdoors and the sunlight will come in a certain way and light the table and the a whole mood is being created with the light and that will give me an idea of how to do certain photo sessions or for food or even for people because it's all about lighting and, and mood. So I pay a lot more attention to my environment than many people do. It's really dangerous when you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> so don't drive with me but that's a problem because i'll start looking i'm going oh my god that is really awesome oh. <laughs> and so um and things that i read and lots of movies i watch a lot of foreign movies that's a big influence for me lots of murder mysteries because i love the way that they like things um and i can get ideas for several things like that, or for a new class, or just for a photo project, or something like I said that I'm writing on, or something like that. This might be a cool idea for you: is to find a movie set in South Florida and go do a, a, a Udemy class at a movie set and tell oh. people the differences. I know there's a lot of movie sets in South Florida, so you know, just just a, just food for thought that came up while you were telling cool. me about your yeah. creative ideas. So, so. so What's your, in addition to Udemy and your own websites, what's your favorite website to follow and to, and to, to, you know, that you, you go to, that you really need to go to all the time and it, not meaning social media or anything, but is there a, a specific website or online tool that you love and use a lot that you okay, need everybody so to know about? I don't about? have a specific, uh, but I did give a tip last time. I don't have a specific website that I go to. I really move around a lot and I'll, 
uh, there are different things that are going to influence me different times. But I did a, uh, we did chat about a tip last time, and that is I use a um, uh, an app that's called Snapseed. It, it, you, it used to, it's a Google now. It is for free, and you have it on all the phones possible, and you can tweak images in a in a really beautiful way. You can really play around with quite a lot, and that's my go to app. That's my favorite app. So that's one thing that, um, that's the one thing I'd, I'd love to share. <laughs> Excellent. And that's a wonderful resource. So thank you for remembering that because I should have probably well, listened to my notes. <laughs> listen to the show. I couldn't listen to the show because it was not, yeah. it wasn't there. Um, so um, how can we find you on Udemy and, and what are some of your other connection points? And if you could also, as you're, when you're through saying them, if you could share them in the text area so that people who will listen to the replay can watch it, you know, find you as well. I think that oh, would be dear. really great. <laughs> and I know it's um, create photos. Um, okay. Is on one Udemy, of them, I'm I using my, um, my name and then at create photos is for Twitter. And you can you can see that over there. It's for okay. Twitter. And actually, my name is. Uh, let me give everybody a tip over here. This is I started doing everything in the name of my company, which was is Create Photos. And I think it's at the time that's what a lot of people were doing. They were dividing their companies from their name. And now I'm using my name more and more because I'm teaching so many different things. And uh, the way that I'm doing social media most people like to relate to the person and not just the company. And so I'm going to suggest that everybody uses their name <laughs> because I'm, I can't change now because I've got too many followers on this or that and I would lose everything. But I might one day, who knows? Anyways, so uh, YouTube and Udemy, uh, put my name, Marguerite Beatty, and, and you'll find my classes. And then on Twitter, I'm on at Create Photos. On Instagram, I am Marguerite Beatty. Yeah. That's a great, well, you know, that's a really important, uh, valuable tip because it depends yeah. on how you want to brand. If you want to brand the business, then you use your business name. If you want to, oh, I'm sorry. I got to turn off. I thought I had everything turned off. Um, but if you want to brand yourself, you have to use your name. Now, I, I did the same thing. Actually, I did the reverse. I started out with my name because I didn't have a company name for my consulting business. So I started out with Heidi Richards Mooney and then I created um, about eight years ago, Redhead Marketing. So so it kind of, in for me, it worked in my favor because people who knew me as Heidi Richards found me uh -huh. under, Heidi, under Redhead Marketing. Whereas the reverse is not always true right. when you start out with a business name. So I think that you're very, you're right. And and personal branding really today is much more important. And, I'll, and I think one of the reasons is because Sometimes we decide to change yes. companies, change careers, change the name of our company, which I've changed my company name three times in 30 years, which is why I had to brand Mar Heidi Richards Mooney. Um, so I think that it's important to know from personal branding. And we'll, we'll have some more. We've had some personal branding experts oh, cool. on our show. And we'll have some more. But thank you, Marguerite, thank you for all those wonderful, wonderful tips. Um, I, I'm I'm thrilled that you had the time to redo this. And you know what? It's funny because we became much more succinct. We didn't have the knock on wood technical challenges yeah. we had at the first one. So I think this turned out to be a, a really great show. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Uh, again, this has been the Entrepreneur Show. We've been talking with Marguerite Beatty, uh, a photographer, author, and teacher who teaches on uh, photography classes on Udemy. And I'll just mention our next show is on Thursday. At, um, at 2 p.m. with Tracy Amen. She is the, one of the founding members, founding directors of the Women's Speakers Association. She ha is going to talk about how to set up, market, and leverage oh, cool. a Facebook group. So, uh, Margaret, I know it's going to be really good. Tracy's, I've been following her for years. She's a virtual assistant that got very involved in other things and helps people a lot. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm always excited because th there's just so many fabulous women. I wish that I could do this all day long because just talking to women like you with so much knowledge and expertise and experience i think it's just thank it's fabulous you. It so thank you again marguerite I, you're welcome. we'll talk soon bye bye everyone oh go to weca i'm going to put this in the top of uh,
Weekhigh.org. That's our website. And of course, entrepreneurs, uh, we've got a special running this month for Bye, membership. So again, bye-bye, Marguerite. Take care.